This video is brought to you by Embato Elements. Today, I'm gonna show you 10 things I wish I had known as a beginner in Apple Motion. When I first started out in Apple Motion, I found the layout to be a little bit confusing because I was really used to Final Cut Pro's layout, but not so much Apple Motion. But if you do this, you're gonna make your layout look a lot more like Final Cut Pro. If you go up to your menu bar and find Window, go down to Window Layout and change it over to Cinema, you'll notice this actually is quite a bit more like Final Cut Pro. On the far left hand side, you have your browser, which is all of your different layers. Then on the far right side, you can actually access your inspector and you can find stuff like the properties, which is very similar to the transform panel in Final Cut Pro. Then at the bottom here, you'll see that you have your timeline. Something I really wish I had taken advantage of early on in Apple Motion is its super powerful favorites menu. If you go into your library and scroll to the bottom, you're going to see two menus here. You've got your favorites folder and you've got your favorites menu. Anything you apply in this favorites menu is actually going to appear at the top. You can click on it and you can apply it from here. So for example, I have this smoke asset that I use all the time from our sponsor in Bado Elements. So I'll click on that and now this smoke asset is in this project. Envato Elements has over 57 million assets that you can download at any time, and they are constantly adding to that number. That includes stock video, photos, music, sound effects, video templates, graphics, graphic templates, titles, and so much more. Plus, one of my favorite things is that Envato Elements has just introduced their one week free trial. So you can try everything that they have to offer and make sure it's the right fit for you. Plus, if you sign up for their annual subscription, you're gonna get that price at 50% of what their monthly subscription cost is. So that is an amazing deal that you shouldn't pass up. And one more quick thing, Envato actually has their own YouTube channel called Envato Touch Plus, where they have a vast library of really amazing tutorials, ranging from Photoshop to OBS to even Final Cut Pro. So make sure you check out that link down below as well. All I need to do to get something into that favorites folder, I'll click and drag this clouds generator, for example, and I'll put it into this smoke folder. And so again, anytime that I need these clouds in a project, all I need to do is either click and drag it from the favorites folder or go up to my favorites menu and apply it from here. Something that makes Apple Motion immensely powerful is its capabilities of motion tracking specific effects. So let's say on this particular piece of footage, I want to track some bulging eyes onto me. Well, I would go up to filters, go to distortion, and I'll select bulge. So I have this bulge filter. Let's find the center parameter here. We'll click on this down arrow. We'll go to add parameter behavior and we're going to select track. So now that I have this tracking parameter set, I can push analyze and this is gonna go through and automatically track my eye for me doing all the hard work. So now this effect is applied to my eye and it looks really, really good. It works and integrates very well in Apple Motion. But it's not just for bulge effects. This works with all the other distortion effects you might wanna use as well as it works with 3D cameras. We'll go up to add object, select camera, and we'll switch everything over to 3D. Now we can go to the properties of this camera and find the position parameter. Click on this down arrow, go to add parameter behavior and select track, and we'll go ahead and just track that footage that we want. And then we can drag the tracker over my eyeball there. So now you can see how that track is applied to the camera, creating that Beats by Dre look that everybody wants. And it's just super, super fast and super simple to pull off. Something I wish I knew early on in Apple Motion is the ability to rename parameters in Apple Motion for your templates in Final Cut Pro. If you open up a project and go up to the project layer, you can select this project menu here and see all of your published parameters directly in Apple Motion. All you need to do to rename a parameter is go over into this menu and double click on any parameter and we can say outline opacity or something like that. So now we've renamed this parameter for Final Cut Pro, which makes it so much simpler for people to follow your templates because all of your parameters are named exactly as they should be. Plus, if you want your parameters to be in a different order, all you need to do is click and drag these parameters around and now the order will be set accordingly in Final Cut Pro. The next thing I wish I had known in Apple Motion is actually setting in and out points for your animations. And what I mean by that is I have this template I've created called Magnify, and I wanna showcase this logo down here on my leg. But let's say I need this to be much shorter so I don't actually go into the next shot. Well, if I push Option right bracket, that'll trim it down. But if I play through, you'll see how fast the animation plays out now. It's very, very fast. And here is the original speed. 
So if we set an in and out animation in Apple Motion, that's gonna tell Final Cut Pro how fast that animation should play out. So if we go back over into Apple Motion, we can see this nice basic animation that I've set up. All we need to do is go to the end of that animation and push Shift M and that's gonna create this marker. Double click on that marker and find the type setting. We're gonna change it from standard over to build in optional. Now we can go to the end of the animation and do the same thing. So we'll find that, Shift M, double click that, and change it over to build out optional. So now if we save this and send it back over into Final Cut Pro, if I need to shorten this animation down quite a bit, I can push option right bracket, and the animation should play out at the exact same speed as it was originally intended. The next thing I wish I knew about in Apple Motion is deleting the title background. Currently in this Mr. Beast caption that I've created, you can see that there is this title background layer. If I go into Final Cut Pro and apply this caption on top of everything, you can see this text is right here. Now I can't click and drag the text around, but sometimes in Final Cut Pro, you need to actually use the transform tool for one reason or another. So if I use the transform tool right now, you'll see with this title selected, it's actually moving the entire scene around and I just want the title. So what I need to do is go into Apple Motion and actually delete this title background. I'm gonna push Command S to save that and then we'll go back into Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and replace that title. So now I can actually use the transform tool directly on this title without affecting the underlying layers. Something I wish I had known early on is that you can actually change the width over a brush stroke in Apple Motion. So I have this line that I've created and I want it to come to a point down here on the left side. So to do that, we'll go over into our line parameters and we'll change the brush type from solid over to airbrush. So now it's kind of got this softer edge. If I want that edge to just be nice and clean, we can come over here to the brush profile and click and drag and get this black area so that it's just a nice clean edge all the way through. Then from there, we can go over into the stroke settings and find the width over stroke. I'm gonna click on this down arrow. If I click and drag on this keyframe point, we can actually see now how the line comes to a point here on the far left side and it's nice and thick on the right side. I can also create multiple points if I push option and just click and create different points so that we can have this line adjust to different values. So if I want it to start out really thin and then get really thick in the middle, I can do just that. So this is super powerful for your different graphics. Something that used to drive me crazy in Apple Motion is whenever I wanted to apply a new layer, it always applied it to wherever my playhead was. So for example, I wanna apply a color solid on my project, I'll just click and drag, and you'll see that it is applied it at the very, very end here where my playhead was. So I would need to actually click and drag and extend that out and it was just a bunch of hassle and really frustrating and annoying because usually I wanted it earlier in the project. So if you go up to motion, preferences, find the project pane here, you can see at the bottom there is the create layers at setting. I'm gonna change it from current frame over to start of project. I also recommend that you set it to use project duration. So now anytime you apply something, I'll apply these clouds, it's going to do it over the entire project and then it's much easier to just find the point where you want it to be cut down to and push I to trim it or O to trim it out. When I first started out using 3D layers in motion, it was always such a hassle to access those layers. So I'd play through, find the moment where I want to see the layers, then I'd go to the top left, change the active camera over to something like a top, and then I could see the different layers and I would zoom out and kind of adjust things accordingly. But there is a much better way. I'm gonna set this back over to active camera. If we go to the top right hand corner, you're gonna see this icon, click on that, and we can change this over to a multi-view setup. And this is gonna work better if you have a large monitor. But now on the left side, you can actually see my active camera. So you can see exactly what the camera is seeing. And on the right side, I can actually select the different layers and move them around in real time. Have you ever created and designed an entire template and realized you selected the wrong file type at the very beginning? Well, don't worry, you can actually convert your project at the very end. All you need to do is with your project open, go on up to file, select convert project to, and then select whichever of these you want. So let's say I want to apply this title as a generator, then I can select generator. This is gonna create a new file. We could push command S to save and publish everything. And we can just call it the subscribe generator. 
and now this is going to show up in Final Cut Pro's generator tab rather than its titles. So that was 10 things I wish I had known as a beginner in Apple Motion. I really hope this was helpful to you. Also, I'm super excited because I just launched my first set of merch, so you can check that out right here. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.